So, uh, now we want to see some effective methods for the computation of <coughs> parameters. We start with the generic methods. Uh, A cn times n. with the, the case I put before. So A, uh, let us say, because this is simple to understand. Okay? So in this case, you know that you have real eigenvalues. So lambda 1 less, t, uh, less than or equal to lambda 2 less than, than or equal to lambda 3 up to lambda n. In this case, I uh, ordered my eigenvalues by uh, increasing Okay? Uh, this can be positive, negative. There are some criteria to understand. Uh, without uh, making any computation. Uh, we, if you only know the characteristic of polynomial of A, you can know if these eigenvalues are all positive or all negative without making any computation. If um, let us take the characteristic polynomial of if this polynomial has all positive coefficients, then eigenvalues are all negative. If the uh, coefficients are, are uh, I'll make one example. Let us check this thing. Okay? Uh, Lambda of A is 1 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda minus 4. This is equal to lambda squared minus 4 lambda minus 1. You can see that coefficients are plus 1, minus 4, minus 1. Uh, they are not all the same sign. So, uh, eigenvalues are not all uh, negative. They are not even plus, minus, plus alternative. In that case, eigenvalues are all positive. Okay? So, this means that one eigenvalue should be uh, positive and the second should be. In fact, in this case is trivial because you can compute them as well. lambda is equal to 2 minus plus square root of A. Uh, no, 2, I use the degrees. Now you can see that I can measure that uh, the, these coefficients of 
plus minus one. What does it mean? That now lambda is equal to seven minus plus square root of seventeen. Forty-nine minus square root of seventeen divided by two. So in this case, you can see there both. standard courses. But the, then there are some more, for example, when there is uh, uh, eigenvalue zero, if the loss coefficient is zero, there are some more things to do to tell, but uh, I have no time to do this. Okay. But in any case, I know that these eigenvalues are real. I can put them in increasing order and we get this final sequence. Uh, for simplicity, uh, because uh, uh, it's not a big issue, but for simplicity, for simplicity, <coughs> we assume number one less than lambda 2, less than lambda n. Uh, I assume also lambda 1 bigger than 0. This is not, also this is not big issue. <coughs> Why? Uh, if I know that eigenvalues are between minus 10 and plus 10, for example, I can add 11 times identity matrix and all eigenvalues shifted by 11. Okay? It's not a big issue. Otherwise, I should uh, uh, speak about uh, uh, absolute value and so on. But I want to, to sketch a procedure such that you will find, in this case, if they are all different, you will have one eigenvector for each eigenvalue or orthogonal. Okay? In this case. And I want to sketch one procedure uh, such that you can find all these eigenvectors. So, how the procedure works? Uh, this is a typical uh, uh, task uh, I can uh, give to some PhD students for this course in order to write down procedure for, for MATLAB, for example. Uh, and uh, not just in this case, you can, uh, then we can see how to do in the general case. So, it works like this. Take a random vector, V. So, this V belongs to Rn. So, then, this V, take one uh, base. Uh, okay. Let us say that you have
this is sum by linearity j equal to 1 from 1 to n alpha j a of bj but a of bj is lambda j bj so this becomes sum for j equal to 1 to n alpha j lambda j So, what is the net effect of, of all of this process? You see that coordinates with respect to the base, to, to this base, were, uh, were alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha n. Now, new coordinates of A, B are lambda 1, alpha 1, lambda 2, alpha 2, lambda 3, alpha 3, lambda n, alpha n. So what does it mean that each coordinate was multiplied by, uh, by the corresponding eigenvalue? So which coordinate grew more? Which coordinate? If I take the ratio between this coordinate and the corresponding coordinate here, of obviously the ratio is lambda j. Which is the biggest? Lambda n. So this means, uh, so you have, for example, you have B, here yeah, is B1, here is B2, B is B1 plus B2. Uh, let us say the A of B1 is B1, A of B2 is lambda 2. Now A B. A B is this. Because this is 2B2 and this is B1. You see, this component does not grow because here we have one. Either 
from the anger is here. But what, what we can do, we can iterate this process. How many times? Uh, quite a lot. So if we do uh, a h of b, we iterate h times. What is this? This is sum from j equal 1 to n alpha j lambda j to the h vj okay then I normalize this vector
So this automatically drives you to the eigenvector corresponding to the biggest eigenvector. So if computational, you don't do this before and then you normalize. You do every time. You apply A and normalize. Apply A and normalize. Apply A and normalize. Apply A and normalize. Automatically. If I do now, I apply A to this. This will become this, normalize. This, normalize. This, normalize. At the end, it will too much to be. Because in this case, we have that only two eigenvectors. Okay? So this is this difficult to, to do with computer? No. Uh, multiply by A and normalize. Multiply by A and normalize. Multiply by A and normalize. Now we have to understand how to produce the second eigenvalue. So I will start with the position. Okay, we have 10 minutes. Now I know Bn. You remember, this orthogonal base was this. Now I know Bn. I want to compute Vn minus 1. Okay? So, theoretically, theoretically, I can do like this. Theoretically. In practice, I cannot. I take V equal to alpha 1 b1 plus plus alpha n minus 1 b n minus 1. So okay. Uh, in line of principle A, B, this is equal to sum from J equal to N to N minus 1, alpha J, lambda J, J, and then I can uh, uh, argue like before, the same argument. No? The biggest, the last component grows more, I know when I normalize, all other components go to zero, so I wish should, should be left only with the uh, uh, component one uh, on the last component. Okay? So, this should converge to this. In theory, this is true. In practice, this is false. Why? Because even if you have zero here, when you compute A of B, let us go back to A of B. Well, if you go back, you cannot, you cannot rule out that there is some rounding error. If there is some rounding error on components of A or B, it should result in some very small, some 10 to the minus 6 component or 10 to the minus 9, along the last eigenvector. Can you see now the problem? What is the problem now? If here there 
there is a psion not zero, this grows more than all other stuff. Little by little, it will rule out all other stuff, and this will not converge anymore to Vn minus 1, but it will converge to Vn. When I iterate. So what is solution? What is solution to this problem? I take A of B and I know B N. What is this? What I wrote on the black? What did I wrote? I write on the black. If this is the component of A of B along B N. Exactly. How to compute the component uh, with respect to uh, on top? Okay, this is not even necessary because the end is not a one. This is how to compute the component along a vector. Okay? And so what I am doing? I am projecting A of V on the orthogonal space to Vn. And this I have to do every time. So when I compute again A of B, so imagine like you have a very infesting uh, grass in your uh, lawn. Huh? Then every one, every week you have to go for this infesting weed and and, and, and and this is some specific pesticide for this. Yeah. And if you do this passage, this uh, uh, computation, then this computation, and you iterate now. So call this uh, this is uh, W, and so it's more correct to say W minus W addition. Now I. So I do like this. I take a vector V. Then I compute W, A of V normalized. Then I take the projection orthogonal to Vn. Then I put the new vector in the place of V. And I iterate. And I repeat many, many, many times. This look converts to V and minus Okay? And what now if I want V and minus 2? It's very simple. If I want V and minus 2, I have to take away along the last two vectors. And then I have to take away the projection along the last three vectors and so on and so on. Okay? Actually, in this case, this procedure works even if you remember, 
we assume lambda 1 less than lambda 2 less than lambda 3 less than lambda n and this is bigger than 0 okay this works even if here there are equal why? because we already got Vn we computed Vn if there is a second uh, uh, biggest eigenvalue is still lambda n uh, you will get another eigenvalue Vn minus 1 with respect to the eigenvalue Vn does not change anything so this works perfectly this position then you can exercise, you can write this position for then then what happens if these eigenvalues are not all positive every time you will get the biggest modulus I can make. So if you have from minus 2 to 3, well let us say that you have 3 I can make. 3, 1, and minus 2. First time you will get 3, second time you will get minus 2. Uh, the I can make will correspond to minus 2. And third time you will get 1. Because we will follow the modulus. If you are very unlucky that you have two eigenvectors uh, with the same modulus, in this case you can have, for example, minus 2 and 2, uh, you can get not, uh, uh, okay, if the, I forgot to say one thing, if the uh, modulus, uh, if the eigenvalue eigen is negative, uh, uh, the sequence of vectors does not converge, oscillates. Converge, but the fact that there is this minus one that you will have, you will get some, some vector v, uh, a of v will be minus two v. And then you normalize, and then it is minus v. Then a of v is still uh, a of minus v is again v and so it's all oscillating with periodicity too. If uh, you have in the case of negative eigenvalues when you have two eigenvalues with same modulus, for example 2 and minus 2, you will get one eigenvector that has some oscillates with periodicity too but is not equal to the opposite of each one. So the, the part that stays constant is the eigenvector of 2. The part that changes sign is like that you have two like sum of two pieces. One, when you apply A, does not change, and, and the second changes sign. The first one is the eigenvector of the positive eigenvector, the second one is the eigenvector. But this is not important because in any case, one way to eliminate this problem, if you put some random coefficients, for example, you could say, I don't want to move my eigenvalues because I don't know how, how big I have to, uh, uh, I have to add some um, multiple of identity, and I know how many, many, maybe I have to add uh, 100 times identity, 10 to uh, the 5, 10,000 the identity, or something like this. Maybe this is awkward, you don't want to do it. But you can always add some, for example, uh, some small parameter times the identity. What is the sense of this? The sense of this is to uh, uh, move the eigenvectors in, uh, in a way such that it will be very, very uh, unlikely that uh, there are uh, at the same time the positive and the negative eigenvectors eigenvalue equal. No? If you maybe for some reason you started from a problem with some integer eigenvalues, you can have that one eigenvalue is 2, another eigenvalue is minus 2. But if, then if you add some epsilon identity, uh, 
uh, one which uh, will become two plus epsilon and the other one will become minus two plus epsilon. Now the modulus is different. So if you add some random small uh, multiple of identity, this problem there is not. And uh, when you apply this method, you find all the eigenvectors with respect to the all the eigenvalues in decreasing order of modulus. When you get the eigenvectors with respect to positive eigenvalues, there will be convergence. Otherwise, there will be oscillation with periodicity in the end. And this is uh, how fast is this method converging? Very fast. This is exponential method. So you have not to apply many, many times. Typically, for the positions required in MATLAB, uh, you have to apply it some several hundred times. 300 times, 400 times. It depends on the ratio between two consecutive eigenvalues. Two consecutive different eigenvalues. OK? And so it's very quick. So. In this way, of course, I was not very, very precise, but I thought you can do all of the procedure, uh, but no, you cannot go to the student, former students of other this because they already did. Then you could steal the program for them or for by no, you have to work and do it yourself. You can. Uh, Try uh, do this uh, and uh, try this uh, in, uh, to apply this at symmetric matrix uh, matrices in MATLAB, and it will work. Yeah? You can produce this program. You can make one group can make this, then another group can make another task. Okay. Okay. So for today.